The Russian army is technically capable of launching caliber cruise missiles from missile carriers in the Mediterranean. However, to do so, they must violate NATO airspace. Dmitro Pletenchuk, the spokesman for the Ukrainian Navy, stated the information during a telethon. Technically, we are within the strike range of those ships in the Mediterranean. However, it's unlikely that Russia would dare to use them, Pletenchuk stated. He added that if Russia decides to launch missiles from the Mediterranean, they would have to pass through the airspace of NATO member states. The Ukrainian armed forces have destroyed a total of 28 Russian ships, including the submarine Rostov Nadonu. Among the destroyed ships are three cruise missile carriers, a submarine, and two new ships, specifically the newest ones, the Askold and Cyclone. These vessels represent various classes, ranging from a flagship missile cruiser to missile boats and units designed for deploying small numbers of troops and patrolling, such as the Raptor, Cerna and Tunnets. At present, Russian Navy officials should be very worried about the future of the Black Sea Fleet. Ukraine is taking out the fleet's warships faster than Russia can build or reinforce them with ships from other regional fleets. As long as Turkey blocks warships from passing through the Bosporus Strait, connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Black Sea, the only way for the Russians to reinforce the shrinking Black Sea fleet is to transfer smaller vessels to the Black Sea by river or to build them in Black Sea shipyards. It is not for no reason that, in April, Ukrainian commandos sabotaged the Russian missile Corvette Serpukov in Kaliningrad on the Baltic Sea. The Buyan-class Corvette was one of the few Russian warships small enough to travel to the Black Sea via canals, the Volga River, the Don River and then the Sea of Azov. After all, the Ukrainians have been developing or acquiring from their foreign allies an array of long-range anti-ship munitions. The United Kingdom and France have given Ukraine Storm Shadow and Scalp EG air-launched cruise missiles that travel as far as 155 miles. The United States has donated several models of ground-launched Army Tactical Missile Systems rockets. Russian personnel and material losses in Ukraine are so high, the Kremlin is having serious problems recruiting new contract soldiers and is relying on decommissioning Soviet-era weapons as it cannot produce enough modern versions, Ukraine's military intelligence spokesperson said. Speaking on national TV, Andriy Yusov said the situation will soon have an impact on the frontline situation and Russia's ability to effectively wage war. Russian losses in Ukraine reached conflict highs during May and June, the UK Defence Ministry reported. In an intelligence report on X, the ministry said average daily Russian casualties, both killed and wounded, reached 1,262 and 1,163 in the two months, respectively. On July the 18th, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in an interview with the BBC that around 20,000 Russian troops were killed during Russia's failed offensive in Kharkiv Oblast. They can replenish these losses, Yusuf said, adding, but there are already serious problems with the recruitment of new contract soldiers. The aggressor state is coming up with new incentives at various levels to attract new cannon fodder, but this machine is starting to malfunction. As Russia has sought to replenish its military, decimated by high losses in Ukraine, authorities have implemented financial perks to incentivize enlistment. Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin signed a decree on July the 23rd establishing a one-time signing bonus of 1.9 million rubles or $21,200 for city residents who joined the military. It will currently take Russian President Vladimir Putin five years to get Moscow's army back to its February 2022 strength, a prominent British military chief has said as the war in Ukraine drags on and casualties mount with little prospect of an end to the conflict in sight. Russia's military has now sustained an estimated 550,000 casualties in the nearly two and a half years of full-scale war in Ukraine, Admiral Tony Radakin, the UK chief of the defence staff, said. Our assessments are that it will take Putin five years to reconstitute the Russian army to where it was in February 2022, Radikin said at the Royal United Services Institute Land Warfare Conference in London. It will take another five years beyond that to rectify the weaknesses that the war has revealed, he added. 
The figure of 550,000 casualties comes in just below statistics put forward by Kyiv. Casualty counts are very difficult to pinpoint, and numbers put forward by either party in a conflict are treated with caution. Western estimates of Russian casualties have typically broadly matched Ukraine's numbers in recent months, and the British government said in late May that Russia's killed and wounded had surpassed half a million since early 2022. Western intelligence and experts suggest many of the Russian soldiers currently on the front lines have limited training, often volunteers or convicts, and cannot carry out complex operations.